All right, GDP out today, the worst of both worlds, low growth and sticky high inflation. 1.1% real growth and 5%, uh, 5.3% inflation, even the PCE deflator, the core deflator, up 4.9%. Not good. Let's try to make some sense of it. We've got John Carney, Breitbart Economics and Finance Editor and co-author of the must-read Breitbart Business Digest. Uh, what do you think, John? The worst of both worlds? It was very a very bad report. Very low growth. Businesses pulled back on investing. Inventories came way down. And yet consumers kept spending. Mm. So, Larry, just like pop quiz, what happens when you have lower production and more demand? Inflation goes up, That's right? Exactly this is right. an inflationary, frankly, a stagflationary report mm -hmm. because we're, you know, we're seeing the beginning of a contraction because businesses are all worried about the looming recession. They can see the leading indicators. They can see the yield curve. They know the recession is coming. They're not willing to invest. But consumers keep spending, so inflation goes up. And so we're not getting any relief on the inflation. How long do consumers keep spending? Because if, if business is contracting, that's right. not good. I mean, the w eventually, wages will come down, people will be laid off. Unemployment claims, I know they were uh, okay today, but they have been edging higher. It can't last forever, the consumer story. No, it can't last forever, but it can last longer than anybody thinks. Mm -hmm. uh, what we're seeing is basically very few, even though the headlines are full of job losses in Silicon Valley, very few people are losing their jobs. The, and we thought we were going to be on a sort of steady uptick on jobless claims. Instead, they came back down. And what we're seeing is that uh, the labor market strength is going to continue to feed consumption. And, we're, and frankly, the, the, all of the more, more recent data, the, the real-time indicators, things like credit card spending, indicate that the consumers are still going out there mm. and they're still spending. Mm. Just in the numbers here, housing was down 4.2%. The real killer was business equipment. That's yeah. essentially business investment. Uh, minus 7.3% at an annual rate in Q1. That's a bad number. And inventories fell quite a bit. I mean, it's like businesses are liquidating. That's right. They're, they're liquidating their capital investment. They're liquidating their inventories, probably for the reasons you mentioned. They read the signs uh, as well as you do. And then the inflation rate... The core PCE deflator, 4.9%. The GDP deflator is up 5.3% for the last uh, four quarters. So the Fed, it, uh, the, you know, you're, you're in stagflation, virtual recession, but high inflation. The Fed's going to have to keep raising rates. The, these inflation numbers are like two and a half times the Fed target. That's right. The Fed can't look at this report and say we can back off. They're right. going to look at right. it and say, that's it. We've got to keep raising rates. And frankly, some of the things that brought down GDP in the first quarter are probably going to start adding to it. Housing has started to recover. That inventory drawdown is unsustainable given how, many, how much shopping people did. Mm -hmm. When you see the consumer expenditures, businesses, I mean, we're already hearing from people like Procter & Gamble, Coca-Cola, Pepsi. They're all saying a Caterpillar just came out and said that actually demand is higher than they thought it would be. So we're going to see that reverse in the second quarter. The Fed is not, we've talked about this, the Fed is not going to like seeing growth go back up. <laughs> they is, wanted it to come down. Growth. Again, right. if Jay Powell had a backbone, he would come out and support the McCarthy budget right now because that would help him. Absolutely. Less spending will help him fight inflation. may not solve it, but it'll help, and he should be doing that. For the good of the country. It isn't partisan politics. He got reappointed, blah, blah, blah. For the good of the country, he, he should He could do, do it very subtly. He could say, look, the country faces a choice. It needs to have some sort of pullback, right? We can't, to get inflation under control, either fiscal authorities have to re act responsibly or the Federal Reserve will be. So either, you know, interest rates are going up to 6 or 7%, or we have to pull back on some of this out-of-control deficit spending. So, yes, he so can do me. this. So but help he, me. Right. He's not doing it. He's not doing he, it. He's not no, doing he it at all. He won't do it either. Uh, I want to take a stab at why the stocks are up today, 500 points <laughs> some odd on the Dow. Yeah, I think it's because when you look at the consumer spending number, mm -hmm. it's really strong. And people, did, people really thought the consumer would start to fade at this point. Mm -hmm. They said, look, all the inflation, even particularly the good spending was up which is, you know, amazing. Everybody said we're shifting from goods to go into services. That is happening. But the good spending is still really strong. And that, I think, caught people by surprise. And I think that's 
part of what fed into the stock market. You're writing all this stuff for Breitbart so we can read it tonight? Absolutely. It's going to be in the Breitbart Business Digest tonight. Right. And you're our, you know, our favorite subscriber. So my, I, am, I read it religiously. John Carney at Breitbart. Thank you very, very much.